I've got some advice if you're doing A-levels at college or sick form next year, so listen up. As you get ready to move into something new, it's time to start thinking about how to prepare for this exciting new chapter. So here are my top tips on how best to prepare yourself. Let's take a look. First, let's talk about the practical side of things. Firstly, you want to organise your study space. Having a dedicated, tidy study space can make a huge difference in your productivity. Make sure your study area is quiet, well lit and free from distractions. Stock up on essential supplies like notebooks, pens and highlighters. You might even want to find a good digital or printed calendar too, so you can really organise your time, both study and leisure, when you've settled in and you know your timetable. Now, if you sort this kind of stuff now, you're setting yourself on the right path in terms of your organisation and your planning. Tip two is review your subject choices. Spend some time reviewing the subjects you'll be studying, and that means make sure you know the exam board and specification too, for example, because these can be drastically different. Now, there's a few ways that you can get ahead with your subjects. This might not be the case for everyone, but some of you may have been given introductory materials or recommended reading lists provided by your teachers. Now, this will give you a head start and help you feel more prepared when classes begin. This will likely be a skill you've not really had to engage in before, but it's a big jump from GCSE to A-levels, for example, and does absolutely require more independence. Where before you might have read things like Macbeth in class, it's typical in A-levels for teachers to ask you to read before lessons too. Now, if you haven't been given any materials, we think it's a really good idea to read upon some topics anyway. So watch some videos or documentaries or even listen to some podcasts, depending on the subjects. If your subject is completely new, so for example, if you've never done psychology before, getting to know a bit about it beforehand can be so important because some sixth forms will only allow you about two weeks to decide if you like it and if you want to change to something else. Tip three is to set goals. I want you to set clear, achievable goals for the year ahead. So whether it's aiming for certain grades, joining a club or improving your skill in a particular area, having goals is going to keep you motivated and focused. Keep them somewhere you can see them and map out how you might get there if they're a little more complicated, like getting a certain grade. Now, tip four is know your route to your place of study. This one sounds really silly, but this is one that I still do even as an adult when I've started a new job or I've got a job interview, for example. If you're starting somewhere new and not staying on at your school's sixth form, then you'll need to know how exactly to get there. This means knowing the bus or train times, particularly at rush hour, so that you can make sure you're on time and safe getting there and back, particularly when it's dark in the winter. That's also going to really allow you to make a really good first impression as well. Tip five is make the most of your study periods. And oh my God, this one is important. And I know that I had to battle with this one at first. This might not be the case for everyone, but some of you will get study periods on your timetable. And the first time you get those spare hours on your timetable is honestly so liberating. And because you've never had it before in high school, it can be so tempting to see them as free periods to just do nothing or sit on your phone. But you need to think of them as study periods because I promise when it gets closer to exams, you'll wish that you did. So when your teachers give you reading materials or when you're expected to do some extra work to figure something out that you maybe didn't quite figure out in class, use those hours and hey you might not have to do so much at home then either see it as part of your working day so to speak and then when you get home it's not going to be as intense now tip six is managing jobs with your studies and some of you are going to be really keen to get a part-time job alongside your studies and this can be brilliant for your cv showing further future employers that you can manage your time well dealing with studies and a job so yes i would never say don't go for it but my honest thoughts on this are please just make sure that you know you can manage the workload of your studies first before adding even more to your plate. A-levels, like I said, are a really big jump from GCSE, so you definitely need to make sure you adjust to that first before adding something else as well. I had a part-time job in year 13, so it's definitely doable. I was fine. And it was so, so lovely being able to save for summer at the end of year 13 before going to uni. But it's not easy and it means you absolutely have to be quite strict with your study time. Now, next up, I want to talk about the social and emotional side of preparing for sixth form or college as well. So tip seven is connect with your peers. Building a support network is crucial. So reach out to friends or join online groups related to your courses. Because having a group of peers to study and socialise with can make your experience much more enjoyable and make you feel a lot less isolated when it feels like it's all piling up. Tip eight is manage stress. 
Starting a new chapter can be stressful and you'll want to find techniques to help you manage your stress and this will ultimately be different for everybody. Some of you are going to find joy in personal activity, some of you will just want some downtime with your mates, some of you will really benefit from practicing mindfulness techniques such as deep breathing or yoga. Whatever it is, remember it's important to take care of your mental health in your own way. Next one, tip nine is to seek support. Don't hesitate to seek support if you need it, and whether that's talking to a teacher or a counsellor or a family member, asking for help is a sign of strength. So make use of the resources available to you. And then finally, number 10, everybody's journey is different. Now, this is probably the most important one for me, so I've saved it until the end. I really, really want you to remember that there are going to be highs and there are going to be lows, just like there would have been in secondary school. Some bits you'll absolutely smash, some bits will be harder and every single one of you will have your own individual successes and your own individual struggles as well. So therefore, do not compare your journey to someone else's. What you find hard, someone else is going to find easy, but that works both ways. I promise you that your proudest achievements come from the things that felt near impossible you still worked hard to conquer no matter what. Those are the things that show you what you're made of. So... Even when it feels like everyone else seems to be having an easier ride of it, which probably isn't actually true anyway, please just do your best because it's your journey to your end point and that is what matters. Okay guys, so that is all of my tips. Good luck as you embark on this exciting journey into Sixth Formal College. With the right preparation and mindset, you're set for a fantastic year ahead. Now, obviously if you have any questions or need more advice, leave a comment. You might even have some tips or ideas too, so feel free to let me know if you think I've missed anything important. Don't forget, as always, to like, follow and share.